All right, so let's take a look at parameterized. I think this might be an A right, right so here. I'll let you guys figure out whether that's supposed to be an A or not. As we've just seen with generic arrays, I can create an array and I can put anything I like into it. I can put students or undergraduates, I can put monkeys, I can put strings into one array. And that's okay for simple programming. But we're dealing with data structures. And in data structures, we need to separate out the container, the linked list, the hash, the tree, whatever we're working with, from the thing that goes in the container. The string, the int, the monkey, the undergraduate, the student, the person, the automobile, whatever that object is. We need to keep those two things separate. So parameterized types allows us to define a container. So let's say we define a container called my container. And we're going to specify what kind of things can go in this container. So if I specify that I'm going to put monkey objects in my container, then I can only put monkey objects in my container. So I can create a container called my container that holds monkeys and only holds monkeys. I can't put strings, I can't put undergraduates, I can't put students, I can't put anything else in, in this instance of the container. But I can reuse the container later on somewhere else in my code and say, I want a container that can hold undergraduates. The advantage here is that I only have to write my container once. I only have to debug it once. I only have to make sure that all of the methods are correct once. Once I've got that container up and running and working, I can now use it for monkeys, I can now use it for undergraduates, I can now use it for strings, I can now use it for integers. I can use it for as many different things as I want. And so what we're really trying to separate out here are several ideas. One of the ideas is the container, which is the thing that we're going to use. So we're going to use a linked list, are we going to use an array, are we going to use a hash, are we going to use a binary tree? Um, maybe we're going to have a queue and a stack. And we're trying to separate that out from the implementation. So we could implement a queue or a stack using a linked list, using an array, using other data structures. And we're also separating it away from the data. And one of the key things about data structures that we're going to see this semester is that we don't really care about the data. The class is called data structures. It's not called data that goes into data structures. What we care about are the container and the implementation of that container, those two things. The data is somebody else's problem. We're going to have to deal with data because it's hard to build containers and test them unless you at least have some kind of data that goes in them. But what we're really here to think about is the data structures that underlie this. And so what we're going to use throughout the class are parameters, parameterized types and generic programming so that we can write a container. For example, we could write a linked list that implements the list interface. And we can use that linked list, first of all, in assignment one to hold integers, secondly, in assignment two to hold strings, thirdly, in assignment three to hold something else. Okay. Once we've got it solved, once we've got it debugged, we can use that linked list time and again and again and again. We don't have to keep rewriting it. 
And so the way that we do that is that we tell Java we're going to use generic programming, we're going to use pr parameterized types. And there's a set of rules that we have to follow so that Java knows that this is what we're up to. So the first rule is that when we are defining our class, So for example, we'll have a class definition. Let's say we're going to have a class linked list. We have to tell Java that we want to use parameterized types in our linked list. And so to this definition, we add a letter. And the way that we denote it's a parameterized type is we use a less than sign, the letter, and then a greater than sign. And that letter that we use here, in this case an E for element, becomes our generic type that we use throughout the rest of the class. So if we're accepting whatever the generic element is, monkeys, undergraduates, strings, we use E. If we're returning whatever the generic element is, monkeys, undergraduate strings, we use E to denote we're returning it. So throughout the rest of the code, we, um, we use that E. So for example, in our methods, we may have a method that normally would be something like public void add first string S. If we're using generics, we change that to be public void add first E. And usually, because it's not a string, we call it an object. If we have a method that returns a string, remove first, that method, the string becomes our E. Okay. So any time we want to use a string or an integer or a float or anything like that, we replace that with an E. There's one exception where we don't need to use the E, and that's in constructors. So this is a piece of code that your guys are going to write quite a few times throughout this class. Don't worry if you don't understand immediately what this code does. I'm going to talk about it on Tuesday and Thursday of next week and the following weeks after that. But here's a class which describes a node. And it's a generic node that can take anything. And uh, anything that we take, we're going to store in a variable that we call data. And we're also going to have a pointer to another instance of ourself that we're going to call next. Don't worry about it. We'll talk a lot more detail what data and next are. Here's our constructor. And in Java, the constructor has the same name as the class. So our constructor is called node. And in this case, our constructor takes a single parameter. We set data equal to that parameter that we accept. We set next equal to null. And that's our class definition. So the E that we have here is the same as the E that we describe for our variable, is the same as the E that we describe throughout. So instead of saying that this is thing is a string, we say it's an E, an element. You often see people use T, and later on in the class we'll use some other letters as well as we go through more complex things. All right, so we've got our E that we use here, we've got our E that we use instead of string, remove first. And then the last thing that I need to point out is that I, 
I didn't tell you the full story about creating an array. And so if you want to create an array of generic objects, you need to use this piece of code where we create an array. Let's call our array storage because we're going to store stuff in it. We create an array. And the way that we have to do that is to create an object array and then cast it to a, an E array. So we start by creating a generic object array, and then we cast that to an array of E's, and that becomes our definition. This line will compile if you try and do something like this. Is a new like this. This will not compile. This would compile if I'd put my new in there. This will compile. Okay. <laughs>